The Bible says in Psalms 91 verses 9 through 11, Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. If you are afraid of lack and feel that you will never succeed, change your mindset and speak success, prosperity, and bountifulness over your life. Use scriptures as a weapon against the enemy. Build your faith with scriptures like Deuteronomy 28, verses 11 through 13. The Lord will make good things abound for you, whether the fertility of your womb, your livestock's offspring, or your fertile soil's produce. On the very land that the Lord swore to your ancestors to give you, the Lord will open for you his own well-stocked storehouse, the heavens, providing your land with rain at just the right time and blessing all your work. You will lend to many nations, but you won't have any need to borrow. The Lord will make you the head of things, not the tail. You will be at the top of things, not the bottom, as long as you obey the Lord your God's commandments that I'm commanding you right now by carefully doing them. Don't deviate even a bit from any of these words that I'm commanding you right now by following other gods and serving them. We may not have livestock or farmland, but God knows our individual needs and his promises and will custom fit it to our lives. Now think about the word abound from verse 11. That word means to be present in large numbers or quantities. Oh, that we should have the promises of God to abound for us. The Bible is packed full of positive words, stories, and scriptures that we can speak over our lives and remind ourselves of daily so that we might fight every enemy and continue building our faith. Children of the Most High God, you must always remember that our words have power. We must use our tongue to speak the promises of God, no matter what it looks like or what the enemy throws our way. God will not leave us, forsake us, or lead us astray. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, For all the promises of God in him are yes and in him amen, to the glory of God through us. We have to remember the promise spoken by Jesus in Mark 9, Verse 23, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. So instead of speaking doubt, unbelief, or negativity, we can actively choose to speak the promises of God and defeat the enemy. Anyone who's ever felt pain, lasting pain, can somehow trace it back to words that were spoken. You see, words move people to buy and sell. Words move men and women to love and hate. Words can depress, distort, discourage, and deceive. But words can also create new thoughts. Words can and arouse courage, faith, and love. When you speak, what comes out of your mouth takes on life. When Jesus stood outside the tomb where Lazarus was, what did he do? He spoke. When Jesus calmed the storm, what did he do? Peace be still. He spoke. Words can curse and words can bless. The words you hear linger with you. Those hurtful, stinging words, when you speak to your wife, need to change. Build her up. Lift her confidence. Those discouraging words you speak to your husband, they need to change. Build him up. Tell him he can do it. Think about the words you speak to your children. Those words can change their future. They're thinking, words, spoken words, written words, even words set to music are more powerful than we may realize. 
because what you hear will linger and creep into your spirit. So what are you speaking? What are we giving our ears to? Are we speaking words inspired and words aligned to the Bible? Or are we speaking words of contention that bring destruction and a snare to our soul? We don't have to fall for the devil's temptations or accept the evil circumstances he throws our way. We can declare in the name of Jesus that the devil has no power over us. We can rebuke the devil's whispers to try to lure us away from God. We can resist the devil's lies about who we are and who God is. When the devil tries to tell us we are worthless, we can respond, No, I am made in the image of God and I was worth the life of God. When the devil tries to tell us that God has abandoned us, we can say no. Jesus said, I will be with you always, even until the end of time. When the devil tries to tell us we cannot overcome the alcohol, or the drugs, or the pornography, or the gluttony, or the gossiping, we can respond no. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We have the power to say no to that old serpent called Satan and let him know that God's word has the last say in our lives and not his. Hopefully we have seen today the importance of saying no. Saying no can help relieve us of stress, depression, physical ailments, and even the whispers of the devil. Let us commit to utilizing the power of no more in our lives. In Revelation, Satan is called the accuser of the brethren. In John, he is called the father of lies. And there's a reason for that. Deception is an integral part of his strategy to lure us away from God and to convince us to worship ourselves instead of the one who is truly worthy. It's up to us to remain vigilant against his many lies. It's up to us to recognize when he's trying to pull something and turn it right back against him. The reason we don't talk back to our parents is out of respect. But the devil deserves no respect. He deserves no reverence. He was stripped of all his dignity when God cast him out of heaven all those years ago. Ever since then, he's been using his clever lies to try to tear us down and make us just as miserable as he is. Sometimes those lies get personal. Sometimes they can be so convincing that we almost believe them. But we don't have to. Just as Satan uses words as weapons, so can we. In fact, we have the most powerful words of all at our side. The word of God, which Paul calls the sword of the spirit. So when Satan whispers those lies, you'll never get that job or you'll never be good enough, or you'll never be happy. Don't just let him talk back. Hit him with the mighty words of scripture. Tell him I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Tell him I am made in the image of God. Tell him while I was a sinner, Jesus Christ died for me. When Satan is confronted with the truth, he has to flee because he knows his plan has been exposed and his efforts are futile. When we are rooted in the word of God, the lies of the enemy cannot take hold. When we rest in the power of the Holy Spirit, no evil force can overtake us. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. It's that simple. We don't need swords or spears to defend ourselves against Satan's lies. We don't need superhuman intelligence or willpower or physical strength. All we need is boldness. All we need is courage. All we need is truth. And when we cry out to Jesus, he gladly supplies us with all those things and more. So the next time you hear one of those lies, don't believe it. Don't remain silent. Talk back. People of God, like the Bible says in Proverbs 4 verse 23, 
Be careful what you think because your thoughts run your life. Not only do our thoughts run our life, but our thoughts often spew forth from our mouths. We must always guard our hearts because even the tiniest bit of doubt can creep in and cause us to say words in anger or doubt, bringing death to our very situation. However, there is good news, my brothers and sisters. If we can speak death to a situation, we can also speak life. We can speak well over ourselves and our situation. If you are afraid of all the things that are going on in the world today, speak life to your situation. 